Good afternoon, everyone. And I'm really excited to be at today's um, mentorship uh, special networking program. My name is Adugo Isaac, and I'll be talking about One Adita Initiative, which is theme Women Plus Data Changing Africa's Story. One Adita is Africa's first peer network for women data journalists, data scientists, and tech. Technologies. So, like I said, my name is Adigo Isaac, and I'm a product manager at Code for Africa. I basically product manage the One Adita Initiative, and I also lead CFS community activities, including One Adita Hackers, and also champion a lot of our civic technology, data journalism, open government initiative. And I work with the Data Academy team to facilitate a lot of the partnership and project implementation in across Africa, basically. So pleasure to meet you all. And uh, yes, so today I'm going to cover introductions code for Africa and a bit about one editor. And then I'll go right into one editor activities, our impact, and then speak on our mentorship program. So Starting off with an introduction to Code for Africa. Code for Africa is basically the continent's largest indigenous network of civic tech and digital journalism labs. We are across 20 African countries and we have over 79 full, full time staff. So we have a lot of initiatives and projects and programs that we've incubated over the years. And one of them is our One Editor community, which I'll be speaking extensively about today. And we also have others like the African Drone Network of Civic Drone Operators, the Census, the Africa Coalition, we have the PESA Check Fact Checking Initiative, and we have uh, the ILA Forensic Analysis Unit. Uh, if you look at the map here, the red dots are our main offices. And the blue uh, shades, dark blue shades, are CFU presence, and the other light blue are CFU partners. And how do we do it? Essentially, we are focused on building ecosystems, and we um, follow a three-pronged process, which is people, skill, projects. People, because we believe in the power of people. So CFA builds interconnected communities, such as one of the San Hackers, like I had mentioned. And these communities are made up of women, and in some cases, male and female, uh, uh, you know, people with digital technology expertise, media uh, journalism expertise, who bring them together in uh, communities for them to network and leverage each other because each other's self-interest, you know, to advance themselves. And apart from like bringing them together, we also offer skill development. So we provide fast and slow training uh, using different kinds of blended learning, you know, to give these partners quick elements in that help them to um, you know, locking commitments, commitments to initiatives that are tailored towards um, amplifying a lot of like the issues or bringing solutions to some of the challenges that are faced that we face across the continent. We also work with them on uh, on projects. So we don't just train them and leave them with those skills. We ensure that they're applying those skills on um, hands-on activities and you know we do this by partnering with them on our on different projects that we're implementing supporting them through applying those skill sets and also um, guiding them you know by uh, you know through co-production or even peer mentoring like i'm going to talk about um, in today's session so right into one editor one Adita is Pan African is a Pan African network of women data journalists, data scientists, and data technologists, and we have over 400 members across seven countries. And here are, um, you know, our chapters. We are across uh, seven countries, like I mentioned. We have a chapter and a community in Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Nigeria, Senegal, Cameroon, and South Africa. So. What do we do with one editor? We are essentially empowering women for women. So we are bringing women together to empower each other. And 
uh, to work and collaborate with each other and to build their digital and storytelling skills in order to amplify their voices, help them win decision-making roles that are previously dominated by men, right? So uh, these pictures you see here is uh, one of our chapters in Nigeria, because in Nigeria we have chapters in Abuja, Lagos, and Benin. This is one of our chapters in, in Abuja, and these are the ladies uh, ch chatting after one of our meetups. Also, we liberate gender data. So, you know, when you look at a lot of like poets, uh, data uh, publication, you would see that data is often sexist. And this means that women are missing from much of the data used by planners, analysts, and it results in you know, gender skewed decision making. Then most times you find uh, reports on women focus on like reproductive health rather than our earnings or socioeconomic roles. You know? So we are passionate to liberate gender, gender data in order to ensure that a lot of um, socioeconomic and um, political or other uh, social issues are reported on women. So what impacts have we had over the over the years? So we'll quickly run through our impacts. Uh, so the very first one here is a presidential honors and this is Wana Data Tobore Obore, she's a member of our Nigerian chapter. She worked on a human trafficking story in Nigeria, and this story prompted the International Organization for Migration to intervene and assist one of the trafficking victims by paying all of her medical expenses. In this picture, Tobore is receiving a presidential award from Nigeria's First Lady Aisha Buhari. This is another award that went out to Hannah Ojo, the Academy of Science Media Award. And um, she won this award in 2017 for her investigation, investigative report, Sketchy Water Investigation. She worked on this uh, journalism piece with Code for Africa. A lot of like the visualization and, and like the data wrangling were through the support that we provided her. Uh, she's a journalist in Nigeria, works with um, Nation newspaper, and uh, she's committed to leading digital innovations in African uh, newsrooms. Uh, this is another one from Soila Kenya. She won an award on um, Africa Climate Change and Environmental Reporting uh, Award uh, in 2018 for her story on the effects of pollution on school children. And finally, this is one that happened last year. Uh, this is one of our one editor members, Cecilia Okut. She is uh, from Uganda and part of our Ugandan chapter. And she was the first runner up um, in the exploratory um, reporting category for the three part story on systemic corruption in national identity card project. So, um, so what are activities? What do we do with one editor? Uh, basically we have one editor talks and we organize monthly sessions um, and events for one editor members. So across all of the chapters that we have, we have meetups every month. So for instance, this month we'll be having at least six meetups and this will be happening virtually. Um, since the pandemic, we went virtual and all of our meetings and events happen online. So each chapter would have a meetup where they learn about like a topic. It could be like introduction to spreadsheet, like across, you know, uh, data, use of data and technology in digital reporting. Um, also like recently uh, during the IWD, we had an event, uh, three day only, three days online events where we celebrate the international, celebrated the International Women's Day with over 227 registered at attendants and 10 special guest speakers. We also have this series that we call One Editor Talks where we then invite an expert who is like a, um, if you go ahead in the reporting landscape or in the um, technology or data landscape, who then comes to speak to the one editor members about like an investigation they did or a technology they invest, invested or a project, specific project that they worked on that um, had like a massive impact, basically to inspire them and motivate them to continue to um, push forward in their career or their spaces. Uh, we also provide access to technology to one editor members. And what we do is uh, basically empower them with cutting, cutting edge digital technology to improve 
the reach and impact of their work. This photo is from one of the projects that we completed in a slum in Nigeria, so where we mapped uh, a community called Makoko, and we worked with the with these ladies, basically training them on how to use drone and satellites and 360 cameras for um, immersive storytelling. So this this is um, an example of like uh, how we provide access to technology for for the ladies. Uh, we also support them with fellowships and awards. So this come in two ways, fellowships uh, with partners, fellowship with organizations in, in terms of like, so when, when there are announcements for them to apply for fellowship or apply for an award, we support them through the process. And this could be um, through uh, giving them a letter to sort of like um, highlight their membership and our availability to support the project that they'll be working on or even to review their story pitches or to review um, you know, the write-up or the application. And then we also have in-house grants that we provide for one of the team members to work on different kinds of um, investigation, leveraging data to tell and report major issues um, across the continent. Uh, yeah, and then the one at the time mentorship. So mentorship is like a component or like a, like a you know, um, a part of what we do with one at the time members. And usually um, is tied to the fellowships or the awards or the grants that we provide them. So uh, mentorship is our secret weapon. And um, well, sorry, <laughs> one at the time secret weapon is the community. And mentorship is one of like our, um, you know, the tools that we use to strengthen our engagement with them. And um, we have, um, you know, we connect them with network and peers that are across the sectors that they are coming from, whether it's data, technology, or, you know, uh, the media. And we also leverage in-house um, um, project managers and product managers and data analysts to mentor them across the different projects. So in the next um, set of slides, I'm going to summarize how we do it in terms of mentorship. So uh, our mentorship is based off projects. So when we have a project within CFA that requires us to do like a series of investigation or to implement uh, 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 or to uh, cover narratives on a specific subject, it could be environmental, it could be gender gap, it could be or uh, female genital mutilation, issues pertaining to uh, maternal health or reproduction, etc. Uh, we usually engage one at a time members to work on those investigations or, you know, to do the reporting. So uh, projects have like different components. They can involve training, investigative reporting, or um, creation of it technical or data tool and we work with one of the members across like these different areas. So depending on the project demands and the areas that we 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 want to assign to one of the members, maybe like one to five of them or one to ten of them recently that was um and we use one project that we're currently concluding as an example is called the Global Forest Watch um, project. And um basically what we're doing with them is uh working on investigations with series of one at a time members as well as other fellows. Uh, so we identify mentors who are the best fit for the specific um, investigation they are covering. So if it's going to be an environmental reporting on a forest in Cameroon or in Uganda, then we would be looking for a mentor who has an experience in, in the environmental sector. Uh, also, because there is always a requirement for data wrangling or data visualization, then we also want the mentor to have that specific skill set. So um, mentors usually uh, are from the Data Academy team. So Data Academy team is the um, team that sort of like leads the One Data Initiative and the other story lab and investigative um, reporting kind of initiative. Although we have other team members, but then the mentors will then be data analysts, projects, product managers or program man managers from the Data Academy. Uh, then we pair the mentors with the mentee based off you know, their needs. So what I mean by that is that um, based off then uh, the mentee skill set, based off uh, uh, the the kind the level of support they will need. So so usually when we have you know a program where um, 
uh, we want one at a time members to work on. We have a program that we want one at a time members to work on. We invite them to pitch. So they pitch and they tell us about the areas they're going to work on. And based off those areas, they are shortlisted. And we usually select the strongest application. So we already have their pitches. So based off their pitches, we then match them with mentors, mentors who can support them in those areas that they pitch that they will be working on. Uh, so once they've been paired, there are series of routine supervision that happens in the process. And this is how we monitor and ensure there is an exchange of knowledge, ensure that, um, you know, that the work gets done and it, it gets done on time. So the first phase would be um, the supervision that happens between the mentor and the mentee. So there will be series of calls and uh, discussions happening uh, with the mentee and between the mentee and the mentor. So uh, the first step would be to invite the mentee to our Slack workspace as soon as they've been engaged as a fellow and so automatically as be, being a fellow means then that they're a mentee. So they're invited to our Slack workspace, we create a channel for them and then we also add the mentor to their channel. And this is where all the discussion happens, like all the conversation around the investigation, the field work, uh, you know, where they are, what they need, etc. That's where everything happens. Then the mentor also for that schedules like um, routine calls, and this happens like one at least once every week, if if not once every week, once every two weeks, and this helps to like have them discuss and talk through um, you know different issues that they might have encountered in the field or um, where they are in their in their story draft or in their data searches and data identification. Now the second step is where the data academy team then comes in. Now, this is usually when um, the, the, the mentor and the mentee are in the face of identifying data for the investigation or, or wrangling the data that they've collected um, during the investigation. And the Data Academy team essentially provides this um, design support. So we have a data product manager who then signs off on any design that is done. So usually um, the fellow can create their designs for the story or the mentor helps create the design and then sends it to the product manager for review and sign off. But either way, there is a step-by-step -step process from the mentee to the mentor, to the data, data product manager who then signs off um, the data and the design and ensures that it's a fit for the project that you're working on. Uh, so the last phase would then be the supervisor. So for every project, there is a supervisor who then oversees um, the entire implementation of the mentor um, and, and mentee process. And so what this supervisor will be doing is having series of um, meetings with the mentors. So how come his or her communication is with the mentors while the mentors are directly relating with the mentee. So this supervisor ensures that the entire process, the schedules and, and um, the timelines are met. And this includes like tracking progress. It, we use we, could, we use different tools for this. Uh, the communication happens in Slack again. We use the express sheet to track progress. We also use Trello um, in some cases to track projects, pro progress in our in our work. And um, so this this supervisor has the overall responsibility to ensure that everything is adequately implemented and you know everyone is happy with the mentors and the mentees. And after that, there is then the final step, which is like a closeout where um, the entire process is reviewed by the team. And the team is like Data Academy team uh, within CFA. Uh, also feedback, we collect feedback from the mentees to understand, okay, if the process was helpful, if they learned new skills um, from their mentors and uh, any other um, feedback they may have for us. And yeah, then, you know, we discuss lesson learned as well as evaluate achievements if there were any gaps or you know, some timelines were met or like just basically uh, do like a, an overview of like the entire process. And yeah, that's it. That's how we provide uh, support for our mentors and also uh, the entire process that we walk through during our um, mentorship, during the mentorship components, under the mentorship components of our One at a Time initiative. Uh, so yeah, this is just, the, this is the end. 